Welcome to question 11 of the 2010 Mathematical Methods Exam 1. In this question we will be looking at the solution and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. So for question 11 we're told that a cylinder fits exactly into a right circular cone so that the base of the cone and one end of the cylinder are in the same plane as shown in the diagram below. The height of the cone is 5 cm and the radius of the cone is 2 cm. The radius of the cylinder is r centimetres and the height of the cylinder is given by h centimetres. For the cylinder inscribed in the cone as shown above, for part A we want to find h in terms of r. So to do that we're going to set up our own little diagram. So first of all I'm going to draw a right triangle along here. So the knowledge that it is a right circular cone means that that's a right angle just there. And the other thing I'm going to do is just colour this in in green. So that's the height and the radius of the cone. So that might be H there, and that would be R there. And of course, that length along the top would also be R for that cone. So drawing that out over here a little bit bigger, this is the right triangle that we get. So we know that's a right angle, and we know that that is 2, and that goes from there to there. That's the radius of the cone and that that height is 5, so that's from there down to here. And now the reason why I'm taking so much time to set this up is you'll see in the examination advice in a moment that this question was very poorly done. So we're going to put our cylinder in now, which goes in like this, and again it shares a right angle, and that's also a right angle there, which will be important in a moment, and that we know that that length there was H. We knew that this was R, and this was also R, which means that this length here is going to be represented by 2 subtract R. And now we've got enough information to keep working through this problem. The last thing that I'll draw in is going to be that this angle here is theta, and that this angle here is also theta. And that's important because what we're actually dealing with is two similar triangles. And now because we're dealing with similar triangles, we can use ratios. So we can make the statement that 5 divided by 2, which is the height of the cone divided by the radius of the cone, is going to equal another ratio. And if we look at what's in corresponding positions, the height here of 5 is in the same position on the big triangle as the h value is on the little triangle. So we can write this as h divided by and the 2 in the big triangle is in the same position as the 2 subtract r in the smaller triangle. So that means that those two ratios are equal. So when we rearrange that, we can multiply by 2 take r, and we would get h is equal to 5 over 2 times 2 subtract r. And now we could, but we don't have to, expand out that bracket. So it would be 5 times 2 is 10, subtract 5 times r, all divided by 2, and that is the expression for h in terms of r for this question. So from the examiner's report you can see their working is very similar, and that they said that students found this question difficult, with only about 11% of students getting full marks for this question, and almost 70% of students getting no marks whatsoever. And the issue here is that few students realised that similar figures were needed to solve this problem. And a common incorrect formulation was the wrong ratio, that h over 5 is equal to r over 2. And we could see from our working before it was a little bit more complicated than that. For the next part of this question we're told that the total surface area s of a cylinder of height h and a radius of r centimetres is given by the formula s is equal to 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. And for part b we're asked to find s in terms of r only. Now to do that we need to remember what we found for h before, which was that h is equal to 10 subtract 5 r, all divided by 2. So therefore, s can be written as 2 pi r multiplied by h, but instead of h we're going to replace that with an expression with only r in it, so we're going to have 10 take 5 r all divided by 2. So therefore the surface area s is equal to, and this 2 and this 2 can cancel, which gives pi r times 10 take 5 r, and expanding that out we get 10 pi r minus 5 pi r squared plus 2 pi r squared. 
So finally, our expression for s is going to equal 10 pi r, and then our next two terms are like terms, so they'll combine to give minus 3 pi r squared. So that is the answer to part b for this question. From the examiner's report, we can see that 47% of students managed to get this correct, even though only 11% have got full marks on the previous question, which meant that students were able to use a reasonable answer for H of R in question 11A to make the substitution and then be awarded marks for this question. For part C, we're asked to find the value of R for which S is a maximum. And we've included what we found for the expression of S in terms of R from the previous slide. So to find a maximum, that generally means we're going to use calculus. So what we want to do is we want to solve ds dr, the derivative, equal to zero to find the maximum. So therefore, we need to calculate ds dr. So ds dr is equal to, and now we're differentiating with respect to r, so we take one out the front and take one off the power of r, which will just leave 10 pi. And then we have minus, and taking the pair at the front will give minus 6, because we'll have 2 times 3, times pi r. And that's because we subtract 1 off the power. So that's the expression for the derivative. And we're going to solve that equal to 0. So to solve that, we're going to add 6 pi r to both sides of the equation, and we get 10 pi is equal to 6 pi r. So next, we can divide both sides by 6 pi to get r by itself. So therefore, r is equal to 10 pi divided by 6 pi, which is simply 5 over 3 when simplified. So that is the value of r for which s is a maximum. Now this question didn't necessarily require us to do this, but we can show that this is a maximum using a graph. So if we just sketch a graph over here, this is going to be the sketch of r, and then this is going to be s on the y-axis. And this equation here is simply a parabola. And the negative three pi in front of r squared means it's an upside down parabola. So if you did get the r intercepts, we'd solve zero is equal to 10 pi r minus three pi r squared. So zero is equal to, and taking out pi r as a common factor, we'd have pi r times 10 minus three r, which would give us r equals 0 is one intercept, and r equals positive 10 on 3 is the other intercept. And again, because it's a negative out the front of the squared term, the parabola is this shape. And we know that this point here is going to be 0, 0, and that this point here is going to be 10 on 3, comma 0. And that the point up here, which occurs halfway between, which is 5 on 3, is going to be a maximum point. So with all that in mind for part C, we have that R equals five on three is the answer. And just a reminder that for this question, the justification wasn't actually required, but it does help for us to know that we did find a maximum. So finally, looking at the examiner's report for this part of the question, we can see that students needed to use their response from 11B to determine the value of R that would give a maximum surface area. So once again, even if you hadn't quite got part A and B correct, if you used a reasonable answer, you could progress through this question.